Your authenticity attracts what is aligned with you and it repels what is not aligned with you. Authenticity is complex and nuanced. In this video, I'm going to be sharing more about this idea. Authenticity is your inherent power. Right? It's a true expression of who you are. It's really what allows you to embody the space that you, you know, hold in this world. When you're authentic, you're not minimizing yourself, right, out of fear, and you're not overinflating yourself, once again, <laughs> out of fear. Authenticity has an element of just presence to it, of just being in one's own flesh in a safe and secure way, and having the courage to actually express oneself in an honest and genuine way. Authenticity is a truthful expression of who you are. Like I said, it's your inherent power. <laughs> There's power in the truth. <laughs> right? Authenticity isn't a delusional way of expressing yourself. It's based off of what you really think, what you really feel, what your goals really are, what you really value, what you really want. Mm -hmm. So when you're actually being authentic, it puts you into alignment with yourself, first of all. Because authenticity isn't a very simple thing and it's often just kind of nuanced. Right? So we can do things that are very far out of alignment with ourselves. And in fact, this is the state of the majority of people. Our authenticity gets covered up with various forms of social conditioning beliefs that were instilled in us when we were very young, things we picked up from culture, trauma, the avoidance of pain, resistance, and just egoic mechanisms in general. And to really allow yourself to be authentic, you need to do a lot of inner work. There's just no shortcut around this. To really build up authenticity, there are certain qualities that you have to build up inside of you, right? There's a general pattern here with authenticity within human beings. There's just general points, right? And of course, how you express yourself authentic authentically will be different from me, which will be different from the next person, from the next person. But there's general points here that are universal, like being present and grounded within oneself, being mindful of oneself, the cultivation of compassion and love, understanding, having empathy, being connected to oneself. Right? Human nature is kind of interesting because we have a lot of selfishness, right? But we have this sort of duality to us of selfishness and selflessness of being the devil and being angels of being God, basically. And it's almost like, imagine if there's a diamond in a pile of dog shit <laughs> and that diamond will say is your authentic self, but there's just so much crap covering it up and if you want to be your authentic self right if you want to get the diamond you have to remove right your your crap and in this case if you want to be your authentic self what i'm saying is that the selfless end of the spectrum of human existence feels more authentic it feels more healthy whereas the selfishness right when you're just only stuck in that feels more dysfunctional, right? And there's healthy forms of selfishness and unhealthy forms of selfishness. But you need to use healthy selfishness to get your needs met so then you can go beyond selfishness into selflessness. Like eating food is selfish. I want to eat food. I want to have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. I want to make money. I, I, I. It's focused on the self, on the ego, which is okay, it's survival. But it's when, when it ends at survival, when you don't move into self-actualization and self-transcendence. Right? What I'm saying is that self-actualization and self-transcendence are 100% necessary for true authenticity. Right? A lot of our authentic 
I'm gonna, I said that kind of fast. I wanna make sure you guys understand. <laughs> a lot of our authentic impulses, right, almost exist below the kind of threshold of our awareness. And they've been covered up with a bunch of other impulses. And we have to like remove a lot of this kind of stuff. And it's gotta go into ourselves and heal this stuff and let certain patterns and stuff go so that our natural light can actually emerge. And without really going through the darkness, you're not going to get through the light. Without actually digging into the shit, you're not going to get the diamond. <laughs> if you have a dirty toilet and you want a clean toilet, you gotta clean up a bunch of poo. <laughs> so if you want a silly analogy, that's kind of what it is. It's like the, the core of your being is absolutely gorgeous. It's consciousness, right? Your ego is ultimately an illusion. So if you want to be your true self, you have to first question, what is myself? Who am I? What am I existentially? This is essential for being authentic because authenticity is aligned with truth. Right? Some other core components are emotional well-being. Right? When you're authentic, there's an element of emotional well-being that occurs. Inauthentic uh, expressions create sickness within our mind, emotions, body, just overall self. All right. When we are authentic, we attract aligned connections into our life. When we don't have the proper support and connections, we get sick. Right. These are human needs. There's a gorgeous red cardinal like eight feet away from me. This is like absolutely fantastic. So beautiful. Wow, it's amazing. Right. When you're actually being your authentic self, life guides you through certain directions and to places, right? You can just feel life calling you to certain things. And opportunities will align with you, right? Life supports itself, because I'm life, you're life, this is life, right? And when you are in harmony with yourself and within your environment, you actually support each other. The parts, various parts of life, life work to support each other. Because the universe is an intelligent system. It's more like a mind basically is a mind, it's a conscious <laughs> intelligent system, not some clockwork machine, right? So when you're in harmony with yourself and when you're in harmony with the context, the environment that you're in, right? What does it really mean to be in harmony? What does it mean when parts are in harmony? It means that they're supporting each other, right? So when you're living authentically, life will call you to certain people, places, things, opportunities will align. You will actually be supported. And this only really works when you are in alignment, when you're in authenticity, when you're in truth. Things like this, when you, when this kind of stuff is your identity, it's wired deeply into your being. Which actually takes quite a lot of work, right? I've been doing consciousness work for like seven years. <laughs> it's not a five minute process. This is like, it takes over your life really. This also leads to long-term success as well, right? and a whole bunch of things. When you're authentic in your career, when you're authentic in your relationships, right? And your definition of success can be maybe a bit limited, uh, but really what I mean here by long-term success is uh, really building a solid foundation upon which uh, your life, you know, will exist. Right? Because you need a truthful and authentic foundation for your life or else what are you building on? You're building on the opposite. You're building on delusion and corruption. Next is, of course, integrity and respect. Right? Resilience as well. Authenticity basically encourages your personal growth, a true understanding of who you are. And facing setbacks, right, when you get kind of hit by life, it's like you can actually take it with grace and you actually see it as grace because you're existing in a more harmonious way with life. And of course, a very obvious one is this just leads to more personal fulfillment. It should be kind of obvious. So let's talk about some general qualities of authenticity, some kind of like must haves, right? So self-awareness, or I can just leave it at awareness, right? Are you in touch with your body? Is your body tense and rigid? Can you kind of feel into your body? Can you pass your awareness through your body, right? Or is it kind of stuck, rigid, dense, heavy, things like this? How deep is your connection to yourself and you know your 
ability to be in your body is essential to that. Of course, health as well. It's hard to have an authentic expression when you're not taking care of yourself. So getting your needs met, eat your fruits and veggies, stretch your body, exercise, make sure the information you put in your mind isn't garbage information, read some books, right? cut out you know, mindless scrolling, things like this. Of course, honesty and transparency. There's no authenticity without honesty and transparency because authenticity is a truthful expression of who you are. Integrity as well, genuineness, these all go together. Presence, empathy. Because see, when you're connected to being, to the present experience, right? You're connected to the present experience, everything in your present experience. People, right? You can kind of move beyond your ego and really empathize with their experience. Right? I made a really good video, um, The Shadow of Modern Relationships, where I <laughs> kind of talked about that in some more depth than what blocks us from really seeing into another being's experience. A lot of those core principles in that video apply right here. Vulnerability as well. Being able to like just be soft. Right? And I don't mean soft in like some weak way. I mean soft in like a non-forceful, non-aggressive way. You flow with life in like a Taoist way. Right? able to let go of certain shields and defenses, right? And life is a delicate balance, right? So it's a balance between receptivity and action, effortlessness and effort, right? Being soft and being hard. Right? Authenticity requires an adaptation to context, adaptation to your present experience, because life is in constant flow and change. And so are you. And you have to feel the flow of energy. Allow it to move. Allow the rhythm of life to move through you in an organic, natural way where you don't resist it. This is essential for authenticity. Of course, courage, like I said, because your authentic expression, you know, people will reject you. It'll just happen. But you'll align with people who don't reject you as well. So it's like you need to have the groundedness and just, of course, the courage to act despite of fear. Of course, compassion. I talked about the whole empathy point. Mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of us are stuck within our own ego, our own selfishness, our own needs. And we can't properly see the point of view of um, another person or the agenda of nature itself or the point of view of absolute reality, of consciousness. We're very stuck in like, what do I want? What do I want? What do I want? I want food. I want money. I want sex. I want boyfriend, girlfriend. I want to do this. I want to do that. There's nothing bad about that. But I'm saying that when you are absolutely stuck in the ego, right, and you're not going beyond it into self-actualization, self-transcendence, authenticity isn't really possible because you have needs, right? Self-actualization, self-transcendence are actually human needs, right? You have to do them if you want to maximize your health. For your optimal well-being, you do. Of course, health was one of my points earlier. It's hard to be authentic when you're sick, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. So, of course, taking care of your well-being just makes it easy for you. It's an extra layer of support. And curiosity, this is a big one. A childlike sense of awe and wonder and curiosity, looking up into the stars and realizing, wow, this is a fantastic universe I'm in. It's very profound, actually, and I don't really understand it. <laughs> That's it for this video. I'm offering one-to-one -one coaching. You can apply to work with me. Link is in the pinned comment. Take it easy.